Hello and welcome back. This is going to be a uh, React Native video. As I said, working on a project with React Native now and kind of going through a bunch of different uh, tools and things that I've used on other projects and seeing how I can apply them to uh, React Native. And one of the things I've used on the projects is Storybook. So I'm um, uh, working through just setting up a simple project with, Stor uh, with Storybook for React Native so I can get used to it. Um, we're going to follow along this tutorial, and then I have a couple of components that I want to test that I'll drop in, and I'll show you how we can make them work with React Native. Once again, please make sure you like and subscribe, leave some feedback, comment, thoughts on the videos you'd like to see, and let's get to the video. Thanks. Okay, so for the first part, we're just going to follow along with the instructions that are provided. I am going to use Expo, so let's just uh, f see if the instructions really work. So let's open up my terminal window, and they're saying it's just Expo init template. So Expo init, see what we get. Um, let's try my app. My app, and we're going to use a blank template. And let this run. Okay, let's uh, CD my my app, and then uh, let's do yarn iOS. Get this thing running. Just to make sure that we have our basic app up. Okay, so we have our basic app up and running, so we know that works. So let's go back to our terminal. And we're going to stop this. Then we're going to open up uh, Visual Studio Code in this project directory. And see, let's get a bigger font so everyone can kind of see what's going on here. We'll keep this real simple. I'll update that later. Okay, let's go back to our doc, see what we're supposed to be doing. So the next thing here is we need to add a storybook. Let's just copy this command and go back to our terminal and run this command. Make sure you, you notice here that we've selected the type React Native, not React. Let's just say it looks like so the default is no. Let's take the default and let it run. Okay, so you see here how it says we need to get started. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go into our app.js and just replace the whole thing. Let's just copy this. So let's go into our app.js. And what they're saying is that when you want to run Storybook, you just export that. So we're going to comment this out. And we're going to drop down here. And we're just going to put the export default for Storybook down at the bottom. And what's the next step it says? So you'll also want to add another package to make a change to your storybook add-ons. Well, first it tells me I need to install them. So let's install them. So that's installed. And what was the next thing I need to do? I need to make this edit in my React Native add-ons.js. So let's copy this and let's go back to my source code and storybook or in add-ons looks like it's already there maybe this is an old uh old thing but it looks like it's added it add-on device add-on device actions yeah they're already there so we can just save that and then the other thing is let's look at our stories index uh, this gets storybook UI here. We might need to make an edit on that, but let's see if we can get this going. We're not going to use Jess, so let's ignore that. And now let's kind of run this thing to see if we can see the test stories. So let's go back to our terminal. Yeah, let's let's use our terminal and let's just do. Um, what did I do last time to run this? Yarn iOS. Let's 
Let's get our terminal to kind of reload everything. Okay, so what I'm doing is, oh, let's see what it's saying. This error that you're getting require you to mainly pass an async storage prop. And really what that is, is we need to go into our source code and here you just need to say async storage and I'm just going to say no. Um, I don't I don't think I don't need it for the purpose of this example. You can uh, take a look at this link. I'll include it to give you an explanation of why you add it, but it's it's not important for what I'm trying to accomplish. All right, so now we're in we can see the navigator. And the reason why I'm doing this approach is the th things that I want to test, I need to test on the device because uh, some of them are going to use things that only work on device. And so the basic idea is you can kind of click down through here to kind of see the different um, previews. And you can also click to see the add-ons that are associated with it. And then you can kind of navigate through them here and reload this thing. Hmm. Let's cancel this. And run this again. Okay, so now we get our different buttons and so you can select your stories and click and preview them full view. So we're like now we're going to add our own components. So now that we have it all set up, so let's go to our Visual Studio Code. And you need to add your stories underneath here. But first, let's import the components that we're going to work with. So for the solution that I'm building, I need to have a calendar. And so I am going to just kind of wrap this React Native calendar from Wix. I'm going to wrap that in my application. So the first thing, let's um, add this to my project. OK, so I've added it and then I'm going to just create a, re a really quick component. Like I said, the purpose of this is just to show you how to use them. So let's just create a directory called components. And then inside of here, we'll create a new file called the um, calend calendar picker. And I'm going to import this code and then we'll just walk through it because I don't want to spend a bunch of time talking about the code because this isn't really the purpose of it. Okay, so this is the calendar picker. I mean, this is, sorry, this is the calendar um, that you get from React Native Calendars. Most of this, I've just basically copied the sample on how to get this thing up and running, uh, but I did make a couple of changes and we're going to talk to them. So what, what this, um, component should do when it's loaded, it gets passed in a function for on save date. And when you select a date, the date that you selected should get sent back to the caller. And on cancel date, um, when you select that, it should just send null back to the caller. So, so the idea is, you know, imagine we, this component is like deep inside of our application somewhere and we want to test and make sure that it works properly. I can extrapolate the component from outside of wherever it is inside of my app and just kind of test it here inside of um, React Native Storybook. Um, and so that's what we're going to do. I'll post all the source code for this. There's nothing magical. Like I said, this is really just the sample of how you render a calendar that was taken from the React uh, Native Calendar uh, GitHub repo. So now that I have my calendar in here, my component in here, and you can see it has two functions, on save date and on cancel date, I want to add it as a potential story over here. So the way that you do that is we go back over here to Storybook stories and inside of here we're going to create a new folder and we're going to call it pickers and then inside of pickers we need to create our own story i usually just like to um it's pretty this is pretty straightforward what the process is 
So I'm just going to get started by copying an existing one and then go into my story and let's say we're going to call this, we're going to use the same um, nomenclature of button stories.js and so we'll say pickers. So here we say new file, pickers, sto.js, and then just drop this guy in. And so the difference is that these are going to be stories of my calendar picker. So I'm just going to call it pickers. And then what we're going to do is, um, Let's leave that this decorator in for now. I might take it out later. And we're, I'm just going to call this my basic calendar. And here you can see it's the button, but what we're going to add in here is our calendar, our calendar, eh, our calendar picker. And our calendar picker has um, two properties called on cancel date and then on save date. And what we want is when you do that, something we need a specific behavior to happen. So for now, so let's get rid of the stuff we don't need from here. And so what we want is an action to know that on cancel date was selected. And so the way you do that is you just say action on cancel date, because you can see actions already defined up there. And then we do the exact same thing for on save date. So. Okay, and so that gets wrapped around. We don't need this text, so let's take the text out of there. And so now we have our basic calendar story integrated, but now we need to tell Storybook to use it. So let's go back down here into our index, into our stories index. And you can see here, you need to import the stories you need. So I'm just gonna say import. And then pickers, picker stories, and save that. And I'm not sure if it's going to pick that up automatically. Go back to my navigator. See, so it has picked it up. So you can see here's our basic calendar. So let's let's just see if we got lucky and it just worked the first time. All right. So it looks like it did. So when I pick my basic calendar, you can see this is my component as it appears on the screen. You can see it's I'm not the best at the UI. Um, fail prop. All right, let me clean that up. There's some there are some components that were left over from my picker story. So let's go down in here. Picker stories. Um, what's it complaining about? Fail prop font size of type string supply the text. I don't know where that error is coming from. So we're just going to ignore that for now because we have our, our component here in our view, which is what we're trying to focus on. And so you can see as I select a date, it gets updated here. But the idea for our component is we want to use this as in our form for someone to select a date from the calendar. So I can select this date, so now I've selected the 16th. I mean the 17th, and when I click this save selected, I want to confirm that it's going to take the current date and pass it back. So let's just see what happens. When I click that, I've added my add-on here, and so it's converted my function to an action, and so I can see that my on save date gets called, and it passes the object back that I wanted. So I know that that's working. And then if I go back again here, and I click cancel, I can look at my add-ons, and I can see that it called my on cancel date, and it passed null, which is exactly what it's supposed to do. And so, so you can see how I'm able to just integrate um, my components here in a storybook and take a look at them. So for example, I might want to do something about the fact that these buttons look the way they look. So can I see just to show you how you can just edit these in real time and also what it allows you to do is to see your results. Like I said, if this was buried deep inside of components somewhere, I'd always have to go through some actions to get to it. It's just not very efficient, but this way I can just clean up the component modify the UI all right here. So like if I said, hey, I hate the way those buttons look, I just come in here, where's, a, where's one of these buttons? Um, that's that, more radius, eight. So I can just, like if I wanted to just do that and you see it's just happening right here. And I can test it, look at it, make sure things are the way that I like without 
going back through a bunch of actions. Let's see if I can get this uh, that button moved down. I think it's text align. No, align content center. And oh, I'm putting it on the wrong thing. I need to put it up above. So let's take this out. Let's take this out. Please bear with me. I am not a CSS god. Um, is it justify content center? Uh, yeah, there you go. So now I've just kind of moved my cancel button down to the bottom. So the benefits really are the ability to test, modify, edit components outside of the uh, specifics place it's used inside of your application. Um, there's also ways that you can document your components um, to provide additional information for each one of them here. And, you know, to me, once you start to get the hang of it, it's just a great way to to work efficiently in your application. Um, in a maybe in a later video, I'll go in a little bit more detail, but I think this just gives you the basics and should get you excited about the ways you can utilize um, React Native and Storybook together on device. Thanks a lot. Hope you enjoyed this video and we'll chat with you later. Bye now.